Are you a serious dinosaur collector who wants to make better buying decisions? If so, this is the show for you. Welcome to episode 6 of the Dinosaur Toy Review Show. Today we're going to look at Tylosaurus, which is a type of Mosasaur, one of the largest in fact. Where would you like to get started, George? Well, let's start with the Mojo one. Let's see. This guy already off the bat looks a little sad. If I put him down, it's actually like it's laying on the floor, like the sea floor, kind of like a, a seal. <laughs> I can already tell that this guy is a little bit inaccurate. Let's look inside the bottom of the jaw. I do not see a secondary row of teeth, unfortunately. And it does have the bifurcated tongue though. I get half a point for that. Uh, looking at the flippers, these are already too small and they're like leaf shaped. I already do not like those flippers. They're your stereotypical kind of dolphin flippers. Here is the tail. You do have that top ridge and then the longer bottom one, but it is not the right shape. If we look at the bottom, there's no cloaca, but I will say it is, you know, a nice paint scheme. It's got like the stripes of an eel in a way. I gotta say this is a pretty weird start. <laughs> Let's move on to something that maybe you'll like a little better. This is a Collect A Tylosaurus. Man, look at that face. He looks mean. <laughs> Let's take a look for that under jaw. Look, there are no upper row of teeth, but it does have a bifurcated tongue, although it's a pretty short one. The teeth are all one piece. They're not individually painted. The flippers are also very leaf shaped. And I think this guy also lays down the same way, kind of like a bottom living creature at the bottom of the lagoon. At the end of the tail, we have that same ridge at the top, the lower longer part. It's not the accurate shape I like it to be. The bottom is already much darker than the top, which is the opposite of what counter shading should be. And the flippers are also very, very small. I don't think it could push its big head if it tried to <laughs> swim. <laughs> and no cloaca. So this guy, I will say, is not the most scientifically accurate, in my opinion. It looks like a stapler. <laughs> <laughs> Staplosaurus. Staplosaurus. Perfect. Pick out the next one, George. Let's see if we can find something you like. Next is the <laughs> Papotylosaurus. And oh my goodness, he's doing the worm. Look at him go. <laughs> uh, right off the bat, man, what is going on with that neck? If I were to cover this, guys, you would think this is a seal. Mosasaurus, at least as far as I know, did not do this. But the head looks pretty cool. Look, it's even smiling at you. The teeth are individually painted. I do not see that secondary row of teeth in the back. It seems to be a trend with these guys. The tongue is long but not bifurcated. If we look in the back on the flippers, they're kind of bent at an unnatural angle. I don't think they would have bent that way. They're meant to scoop water, not slide in the water. Look, look at the bottom scales. That looks a lot like a crocodile. It's really odd. That's the first time I've seen this in any of these figures. Uh, no cloaca, so not as accurate. And the tail, oh man, this tail is even, uh, it's, it's even less accurate than the previous ones. At least the previous ones had that little ridge at the top. This is a very crocodile seal-like Tylosaurus. This is like a chimera of different things, but I will say the quality of it, at least it's a little bit better than the previous two. All right, let's keep going. Let's see if there's anything that is scientifically accurate. Oh, this is Safari LTD Mosasaurus. Already much better. Let's start with the head. It's got the right skull shape. And what did you know it? It's got the top row of teeth. The first one of three. Thank goodness. All right. On the bottom, that bifurcated tongue, individually painted teeth. And if you look closely, you can see it has a really nice scale pattern going throughout. Flippers are a little shrink wrapped. And I think they end in little claws, which is kind of cool. We don't know if the claws stuck out or not, but we do know that they had flippers uh, with five digits kind of like our hands. They seem to be proportionate throughout. They're, the back ones are slightly smaller, but very close in size. If we go towards the back, we get that beautiful Mosasaur tail we're familiar with, with the small fin on top and the bigger fin on the bottom. If we move back, there is a little pocket for the cloaca, as some lizards have. It doesn't have much of a counter shade, although it is a little darker and then it gets lighter at the bottom. Instead, what they've opted to do is do kind of like tiger-like pattern, which is pretty cool. I gotta say, you know, points for creativity. The eye is a nice golden color too. Look at that. I will say this is my favorite ones thus far. So there is one left, which of course is the PNSO and is the most expensive figure. So let's see if that blows the other ones out of the water. 
let's take a look. Oh, this thing's beautiful. I can see why it's the most expensive one. But right off the bat, look at that beautiful mouth angle. It looks like it's going straight for the kill. And I am going straight for the teeth. Look at those individually painted teeth, both in the front row and the back row. Let's check for that bifurcated uh, tongue. And there it is. It's a little bit different than the other ones, but it is there. If we move to the top, you can see those beautifully sculpted scales. Wow, it actually feels really nice. Flippers are there and you can see the five digits inside that flipper. Back flippers are a little bit smaller. If we go to the back end of the tail, We've got that top fin and the bottom fin. They even added a little bit of a separation there, kind of like a whale's tail. You can see the muscle extend from the back flipper all the way to the tip of the tail. That's pretty neat. And of course, we've got our cloaca pocket right there. Beautiful counter shading. It, it almost just fades into the color on the top. I gotta say, this is this is my favorite, actually, out of all of them. Not surprisingly. Yeah. <laughs> all right, George, time for the mug shots. On the screen now, we have the backs. Anything jump out at you? Yes. The Papa one has a much darker top. It also looks very straight and plain. The other ones kind of have an active hunting pose, like they're swimming through the water. The Safari LTD one is also pretty straight, but the other three, Mojo, Collecte, and Pinoso, do have very dynamic swimming poses. Let's take a look at the bellies. Anything jumping out at you? Yeah, that texture of the Papa one. Definitely looks like a crocodile or even a sea turtle, actually. The Safari LTD, it's a little bit skinny, actually. Collect A, that it had a very dark belly, but the PNSO one does transition nicely. It's a nice blend. Let's take a look at the faces, George. These mug shots, what did they do? What horrible, unspeakable crimes did they commit in the Mesozoic? Well, one of these crimes is looking the way that the Mojo one does. <laughs> Because he is not having a good day. I got to say, the Mojo and the Collect A ones, they did it. They're they're criminal for looking that way. <laughs> Fari and Pina So have so far the best head sculpt. Let's look at the upper teeth. The Papo, Mojo, and Collect A do not have a clear second row of teeth. However, the Safari LTD and the Pina So do have them, and they are both individually painted. So props to them. Let's take a look at the tongues. The Papo has no split. It's just a very pointy tongue at the end. The Mojo does have a bifurcated tongue, but it, it, it falls short. The Collect A just has a, a weird tongue. It doesn't even, it looks more like a ribbon than it does a tongue. Uh, the Safari LTD does have that split, but it is not that thin thermal sensing tongue that we see in monitor lizards. But the PNSO, it does have a very thin slit. Oh, it's the, really hard to tell. Oh, it does not have a weight. I don't think it does. It doesn't. You're right. Unless they, they didn't make a good job of making it clear. Yeah. So it doesn't have a split. So the Safari one does have the split. And it's I'd say it's more accurate than the PNSO one at the moment. Let's take a look at the textures and the skin coloring. Right off the bat, the thing that jumps out at me is that Collect A looks like a little kid drew on it with a marker. The Mojo one kind of had an eel-like paint scheme, which I kind of like. The Papa one really went for that military green crocodile color the safari was unique in the fact that i've never seen a yellow mosasaur it's kind of like the yellow submarine <laughs> you don't see many of those pnso one however did have the most subtle paint job texture was really good the flippers mojo and collecte have almond shaped flipper which we know that mosasaurs didn't have because they had five digits just like we do so they kind of have a splayed out flipper uh the papa one kind of bunched it together as well the safari one does a really good job at showing that kind of wide flipper and the PNSO kind of wraps it all in a nice little bundle. And the last shot is the tails. Okay, so the Popo, Mojo, and Collecte did not have the two separate sections of the tail, just like the Safari and PNSO one did. But what's neat is the Safari one kind of puts it all in one film, whereas the PNSO one shows a distinct separation between both ends of the tail. So I will say it's leaning more towards how the Safari one has a tail rather than that separation of the PNSO one. I believe the PNSO one was more for artistic choice. All right, George, decision time. The PNSO figure is almost four times more expensive than the Safari Limited and the Mojo figures. If money's no object, which figure are you going for, George? I'd have to say the PNSO one. If money's no object, go big or go home. That is a really good Tylosaurus model. All right, and then for the value option, 
The Safari LTD and the Mojo are the two least expensive figures. I think I can guess where you're going to go as to which is your favorite. I think everybody knows the answer to this one. I'm going to go with Safari, uh, both for the price point and the accuracy. You can't go wrong with it. Surprisingly, for how inexpensive that figure is, the accuracy of it has blown me away. Yes. Uh, in fact, I have been eyeing that figure since it came to the table. <laughs> that I was like, whoa, that one looks good. So take a look below to find out how to sign up for our live stream where George will answer your questions on these models. We also will answer Mosasaur questions at the same time. Thanks for watching. See you in the next episode.